In this video, we're going to look at model relationships and how they work in Ruby on Rails. Three specific relationships are one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many. And this directly corresponds to how your tables and your database relate to one another. In this video, we'll basically just cover these relationships so you understand them a little bit better. And in later videos, we'll actually go into how to code these relationships inside your Rails models. The first model we're going to look at is a one-to-one -one relationship between two tables in your database and your two models, which would have the same corresponding relationship. In this case, I have two example tables, one of invoices and one of orders. The invoices would have a number of rows entered that have an ID, a unique ID for every row. And then that row would also have an order ID, which corresponds to the ID of the orders or the particular order that that invoice relates to in this case. In database parlance, that field named order ID is called the foreign key. In our case here, it is the foreign key, but we're not the nomenclature that we're using as far as naming it follows a Rails convention where we use the singular of our table name, an underscore, and an ID, or the, the word ID. If we follow this convention, it is a fairly simple matter to set up the relationship inside of your model with one line of code. And we'll take a look at that one line of code in a later video. If you choose not to follow this, or in the case of a legacy database where this foreign key might be called something else, it's fairly straightforward thing to set up uh, in your model the proper code to make sure that the model understands that the foreign key doesn't follow the Rails convention. But your life will be much easier if you follow this if you're creating a new database. Now it's important to understand in this relationship there's only one invoice for any given order. The next model is our one-to-many relationship. We have two table, a table of comments, and this these tables will actually be used in our web application that we're building in other videos. So the comments relate to someone making a comment about a movie. Uh, so there would be other information here, but specifically the information we're concerned about is the, the comments ID. Again, it would be a unique primary key for this particular comment in a given row. And then each row in, in this table is going to have a commenter ID. Again, we're following the convention of taking the table name followed by an underscore and an ID. And again, this is the foreign key. You'll notice in our little diagram here, and this is a typical database type diagram, that we have a little star here, which means that you can have multiple or many comments related to a given commenter. Again, establishing this in a, the code for your model in Rails is a one-line piece of code. If, again, it was a legacy database and your foreign key was not named this, you weren't able to name this, again, you can add some code inside your model to make sure it connects. But it's best to follow the convention because then Rails works much better and is much happier. Finally, the most complicated relationship is a many-to-many. -many. And in this case, we're saying that we have a movies table, which has an ID, of course, unique to each movie. And that movie has a name, and there might be other information to go along with it. Let's skip that table for a second. We have an actors table, which has an ID. And I just threw in one entry here, first name, probably last name, and many, many other fields that you probably want to keep track of, or somebody would. But in this case, a actor can act in multiple movies. And multiple movies can have, or a movie can have multiple actors. So a simple one-to-one -one between these two or one-to-many won't work. You have a many-to-many -many relationship. In this case, we have to create a new table in our database. And following the Rails convention, we call it movies underscore actors, where we take the two tables that are involved in the many many to many relationship and we put their names together with an underscore you'll notice that they're the plural forms of it and then when we actually code these out again it's a simple entry one line entry in both the models establishing this relationship in the join table this is called 
the two fields that go in here, and you notice there's not a primary key field. There's just these two fields, and they'd be considered foreign key fields. You have actor underscore ID following the convention, the singular and ID, and you have movie underscore ID, again, singular of the table name underscore ID. You follow this convention, and your coding will be very straightforward in establishing this type of relationship. In the follow-on videos to this, we'll go into the Ruby code that we put inside of our models to actually have these relationships and have them work for us.